Hello YouTube, I'm Zach, you're watching Zach DTV, the place for interesting news from around the net. Thanks for stopping in. In today's episode, we're going to talk about virtual lemonade. Yes, that is lemonade you can send via email. We're also going to look into a British guy who thinks he could fly like Iron Man, and he's doing it. We're looking at some drones that will clean up after your dog for you, so you don't have to. Also, a little bit of new news with SpaceX after their successful flight yesterday. And a Rockwell painting that was recovered after 40 years. Remember, if you like more news like this Monday through Friday, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It'd really help out. Well, let's get right into this. Scientists at the University of Singapore have developed what they're calling virtual lemonade. Namisha Ranashinge says that people are always posting pictures of their drinks on social media. What if you could upload the taste as well? Well, that is our ultimate goal. They do this by using an RGB sensor to detect the color of the liquid and a pH sensor to detect the acidity of it. They then transfer that information over the internet to a special tumbler that has colored LEDs in it to change the color of the water close to the color of lemonade and a metal ring around the lip that uses electrical shock to stimulate the taste buds to replicate the flavor of the drink being tested. They say that the flavor is close, but it's not quite there yet. The reason being they can't reproduce smell. But that's their next step, is to make it smell like lemonade as well. The future plans for this are to expand what they can make it taste like. They're going to go for all drinks. So, like, you could imagine being at a bar sipping a margarita. You find out it's the best margarita in the world. Email it to your friends. Be like, hey, taste this. How neat's that? There's really no practical real-world application. One thing I could think of was maybe for diets. If you want to drink a sugary drink, but you want to lose weight at the same time, you can just order yourself a virtual glass of soda. It's amazing how science can fool your brain, huh? Next, I want to talk about a guy named Richard Browning. He's from the UK, and he has designed a suit that straps rockets onto the user's arms and legs and allows you to fly like Iron Man. You gotta check out the video. I'm gonna link it in the description so you can go see it yourself. It is amazing what this guy can do. It's, he only hovers a couple feet off the ground, which isn't that cool. Unless you think about it, the guy can hover a couple feet off the ground. It can increase your jump height, make you feel kind of lighter, and you control it just like Iron Man. He actually says that if you let your brain go, it becomes pretty intuitive how to move around with it. It is in prototype stage right now and is not released for sale yet. He did put out a press packet, which has gained a lot of exposure with a bunch of different investors. One of the biggest ones being Red Bull, of course, because it's something pretty extreme. His thoughts for this is maybe it could be used for entertainment, putting on shows at fairs, you know, the high-end uh, speed junkies or whatever. Even though the thing only does about 8 miles an hour, still seems like something a thrill seeker would like. He also hopes that maybe one day this could be used for search and rescue or to get people into areas that are harder to reach. Even with those aspirations, though, it's not going to come cheap. It looks like it's going to be around a $200,000 price point for this piece of gear. To me, something even crazier is he's working on a version for kids that's going to use ducted fans on the arms and legs to allow kids to jump higher and play around outside and stuff. Sounds kind of dangerous. But I'm also kind of dad that would strap that on my son and let him go have a good time. So, sounds exciting as well. I don't know how many of you are dog owners out there. But if you are, you're going to want to listen to this next story. Tinky, a Dutch website dedicated to dogs, has teamed up with Space 53, which is a group dedicated to autonomous drones. And they brought us a great invention here. They call it the Dog Drone. Now, this is a two-part system. Part one is a quadcopter that flies around and looks through dog poo using heat vision. That's right, it tracks it with an IR camera as long as it's about the same temperature as the dog so it gets it pretty fresh. And then it marks it with a GPS tag. They've named this drone the Watchdog. Part two of the system is the Patrol Dog. And now this kind of looks like a big Roomba that goes out to those GPS coordinates, pooper scoops, and takes them back to dispose of them. This is another item that is just a prototype right now. They are going into their testing phases. And they're working on making that Roomba little patrol dog a little bit bigger. And maybe a little bit more off-road capable. So he can handle the messes that he really needs to. 
Like I know my old St. Bernard that I used to have, this drone wouldn't be able to help with that at all. Under current laws, their drones do have to be piloted by people. And they are looking for volunteers that want to go fly these things around and look for dog do. But I'm sure as the technology gets better and better, eventually the laws will ease up a little bit and allow these things to be autonomous. They're also, because they're going to be collecting this stuff all over, they want to find a good environmentally safe way to dispose of it. If you have any ideas, let them know. So last night, SpaceX successfully launched and recovered a used rocket. That rocket was in space now twice, and it returned home safely both times. But that's not the only thing that came back safe. For the first time ever, the nose cone of the rocket came back safe as well. It's a nose cone, or they call it the payload fairing, and it covers the satellite and protects it from debris and everything like that, gives it a more aerodynamic shape, and gets jettisoned once they're in space. Using a series of thrusters and controllable parachutes, they are able to land this back on the ground. It's no small feat. This thing has a diameter of 16 feet and is deep enough to pull a bus into. It's a pretty big chunk and it also costs six million dollars to make each one. Musk kind of described it as its own little spaceship and honestly the way it re-entered was a lot like the old space capsules do. With this success we're looking at only one part of a rocket that cannot be returned yet and that is the upper stage that actually pushes a payload off into its orbit destination in space. Elon has plans to return that as well, and that would make the whole rocket reusable. Musk has said if he can accomplish his goal, right now a space flight that costs $65 million per launch could be reduced by a hundredfold. That would make space travel not affordable, but within reach for a lot of people. I can't wait for the future to get here. Finally, I want to talk about a theft recovery that had a happy ending yesterday. A Norman Rockwall painting titled Lazy Bones was stolen 40 years ago from a home in Cherry Hill, back in 1976. This was painted by Norman Rockwell back in 1919 and was used for the September 6th cover of the Saturday Evening Post. The original owner bought it for 75 bucks after he accidentally put a pool cue through it. He took it home and hung it on his wall. Some thieves broke in, took off with it and some other items from around the house and it's been gone. For that $75 investment, that painting is now valued at $600,000 to a million dollars. Partially because of the theft, it gives it a little bit of mystique. Collectors want it even more. The FBI hasn't given any real word on how it was recovered, but there was an anonymous tipster, and they did thank the Christie's Auction House for help in getting this item back. So my guess on it was probably somebody tried to take it to auction, and it was realized, oh wait, this is some fine art that was stolen. I'm just glad to hear it made it back into the rightful owner's hands, even though it took 40 years. Well, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Remember, if you like what I do, your friends might too. So go ahead and share me with them. Every bit of exposure helps. I'm here Monday through Friday. It's Friday, so have a safe weekend. I'll be back on Monday, so I'll see you then.